So we've reached June and we're officially under 100 days until the start of the NFL season. I'm going to give you three things that the Philadelphia Eagles need to make sure they do before week one officially arrives. What's up, my family? Listen, first time listener, or you've been here the whole damn time. Hit that like, hit that subscribe, giddy up, let's go, enjoy the clip, no notes. So as Eagles fans, we're sitting here about three months out, and correct me if I'm wrong, we really don't have a good feel if this team is going to be competitive this year, if they're going to be an absolute embarrassment again, or somewhere in between. We don't know who the quarterback is, we don't know who the head coach is, we can go on for an hour talking about all the question marks with this roster, but I think the biggest question as we sit here today, and the number one thing the Philadelphia Eagles need to do, is surrounding the second cornerback position and going out and finding that guy. Because to me, I mean, I'm looking here. You have Darius Slay, Kavon Seymour, Zach McPherson, no, not ready. Michael Jaquette, remember Michael Jaquette? Michael, remember him? Want another one of those? Want, want another one of those? No. Avante Maddox, not on the outside. Craig James, no. Josiah Scott, I know we traded for him, but no. There's not somebody on the roster. And again, let me know if you disagree. There's nobody else on the roster on the opposite side of Darius Slay to where I can go into the start of the year and say, hey, I feel good. I'm comfortable. There's just not that guy. I know everyone's talking about Steven Nelson. That's the popular name. The Eagles have obviously had a lot of contact with him. I like Steven Nelson. He's clearly a guy that would be an upgrade over anybody we have on this roster to play along with Darius Slay. I want to have everybody calm down a little bit. And this isn't every Eagles fan, but I think some people, because just because he's the popular name and we're so desperate and we didn't really address it high up in the draft like we thought we were going to. Steven Nelson's not Jalen Ramsey. Okay, everybody, he's not Stephon Gilmore. He's nobody like that. He's a starting caliber secondary cornerback. That's about it. Would I go out and get him immediately? Absolutely. But clearly he's waiting for that proper price, that price that he feels worthy enough to get him onto a roster. And no one's offered him that because he would already be on a team if that's happened. So other than Steven Nelson, though, you have guys like Richard Sherman out there. Clearly not the same guy that he has been throughout his career, but he would be an upgrade over anybody that we have on the current roster and like a band-aid type move you have Gary on Conley another band-aid type move high upside but he struggled with injuries and then as far as like a low cost trade option I know a lot of people on A2D like to bring his name up and that's Noah Igbenogany from the Dolphins Igbenogany Igbenogany one second all right so I just wanted to make sure I wasn't completely butchering this guy's name so let me see moment of truth Noah yeah, I think I got it right. Right? She sounds annoyed that I even have to ask her that question, doesn't she? Shut up, you idiot. What? What? Number two, figure out whatever's going on with this Zach Ertz situation. Figure it out, fix it, move on, do what you need to do. Because you can't tackle the first thing, which is address the cornerback position, until you figure out what you're doing with Zach Ertz and his contract, his cap hit, and everything that goes into it. I've been in a complete mental pretzel with the whole Zach Ertz situation for the past 12, 14 months. Because at first I was like, okay, you trade him. Okay, you do whatever it takes to get rid of him. Then as time is going on and as the draft has passed and you're starting to see this roster build up on offense, I was almost in a status where I'm like, okay, can we just keep him? He provides consistency for a guy like Jalen Hurts and for this offense. But clearly... It seems like regardless of if it's a trade or a cut, it doesn't seem like there's any option to keep him, which sucks. Because I think the way it's going to end is that you're going to end up having to just flat out release him or cut him. Or you're going to have to trade him for like 20 cents on the dollar. Because if you were going to be able to get any reasonable amount of value, I think we would have been gone already. And that's clearly what, clearly what Howie Roseman is waiting for. And you never know. I mean, there could be an injury or some team that could be out there. That could be absolutely desperate, but to me, my first option would be, can we just try and keep him? But I'm not even going to try and die on that hill because, A, I don't think that's a very popular decision right now, and B, I don't think it's a very realistic decision right now. So whatever you do with him, figure it out, move on. If you have to bite the bullet, I guess that's okay, even though it's kind of annoying. But given the situation that we're in with the other cap moves now that we've signed our other draft picks, 
move on from it because that's a move that's going to dictate other things that we could do before the start of the season. And number three, don't feel forced into having to make the splash move. Listen, I know it's Philadelphia, and whether it's the Sixers or the Phillies or the Flyers or the Eagles, if there's a free agent out there, oh, we're in on him, we're going to get him. If there's a trade option out there, oh my God, we're going to trade for him because Howie's aggressive. Listen, if Julio Jones landed here, am I going to be angry? No, because it's Julio Jones. He's a top five wide receiver in the league. If Stephon Gilmore, because that's another one. Oh, Ryan, you want a cornerback. There's a guy on the Patriots named Stephon Gilmore. Sure, that's great. There's a lot of splash type moves like Deshaun Watson. Hey, we need a quarterback. Is Deshaun Watson, does he still play football? Like, I feel like everything we've heard about him, it's not related to football. So until we know more about the Deshaun Watson thing, I'm going to take it and just push it to the side for right now, all right? I want to figure out who Jalen Hurts is. And let's just, let's just let Deshaun do it. Like, let's just put that over. Let's just put that over there, okay? But Julio Jones, listen, if you can get him for a really cheap deal, am I going to be mad? No. But I'm not going out there saying, hey, we, have, we can have three first-round picks next year. Let's use one of them to get Julio Jones. Let's take a year where we have limited expectations and we have a ton of assets in 2022, whether that's money or draft picks. Let's take this year and try and be as competitive as possible while also figuring out who these young guys are. I want to know who Jalen Rager is. I want to know who Devontae Smith is, Jalen Hurts is, Dallas Goddard is. You know, obviously some of the young guys on the, on the defensive line, on the linebacking court. Whether we think they're going to be good or not, I want to know who these guys are. That way when we're sitting here next offseason, all these questions that we're sitting here with, we know, hey, this guy can play, this guy flat out sucks, this guy, eh, he showed a little bit of potential but he needs to move forward a little bit. That, I think, is the main goal for 2021. To round it off, number one, fix the second cornerback position. Two, figure out what the hell is going on with Zach Ertz. And three, just calm the hell down, Howie. I know it. You get antsy. Oh, my God. I got to make headlines. I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to do this. Howie, relax. Relax. It's going to be fine. I mean, it might not be fine, but let's pretend it's going to be fine. But honestly, I want you guys to let me know in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with any of the three things that I mentioned or if you think I missed any things. Because honestly, with all the questions that are out there with this team for the next handful of months, I could have easily missed something. But I think at the end of the day, if you ask me my gut feeling on what kind of team this is going to be at the start of the season and throughout the season, honestly, no friggin' idea. And I don't think I'm the only one. 